people think of Miami, and they think about the glitz and the glamour. The neighborhood that I'm from, um, it's not like that. To understand me, you have to understand where I came from. You have to come to over time and understand the hardship of growing up and how I made basically nothing into something. I wanted these streets when I was a little kid, did things that a lot of six year olds didn't do. I lived with my biological mom over time, but she struggled to take care of me. There's been times where I've been walking, I'm five or six years old. And I'm walking the streets, and my mom always used to tell me, just come home before the street lights come on, because I don't want nothing bad to happen to you. This field right here is important to me because what it started. My godparents basically went to my football practice to check up on me and to see how I was doing, and I wasn't there. I asked the coach, where is Guado? He said, Guado been gone about a month ago. <laughs> he quit. After my second day here at the park, I stopped coming and went to the library to play games. I used to act like I'm going to practice. I used to get dirty and all to come back home and my mom be like, how was practice? And I'd just say, oh, it was good or whatever until my godparents actually went to practice and saw that I wasn't there. And then we started paying more attention to him because we was like, wait a minute, you had him. He's five years old and first of all, he was going by himself. We wouldn't have never let him went by himself. That day, I think a lot just changed. My godparents start checking me on every week, every week trying to see what I've been doing and things like that until my mom got in trouble and they just took over completely. Basically, I've been living with my godparents since I was six. My godparents became my mom and my dad. They just saw I was going down the wrong, like, wrong trap. Any six year old running the streets, basically over town, like, you ought to know good. As I look back on it, I see that they wanted the best for me. I'm just glad I'm in a better situation right now. OT, the way he grew up, he knows how to go through adversity. He's not shaken by something that's small. You know, when things get in his way, he knows how to overcome them. He's just relentless, you know, with things he do. It speaks to the point that your circumstances don't determine how you end up. It also speaks to how with the right guidance and the proper super supervision and uh, the kind of love that his godparents provided, uh, you can create someone as special as this kid because uh, Eduardo is truly a special a player in person. He's a special kind of kid. He's a different type of kid for the simple fact that if you show him, you know, that you care and that you support him, you'll get a lot out of him. He'll give it to you back. When Coach Golden and his staff got here, I was a guy who really didn't care about conditioning. He was overweight. He was not good cardiovascularly. To be honest with you, he had lost some of his twitch that he had when he was in high school. He had become a little bit slow-footed. I just thought my play can get me on the field and when they came here, I saw that it was a whole different style. Hands inside, run them, run them, run them. There's a bigger commitment to the weight room. There's a bigger commitment to conditioning, you know, all those types of things that he wasn't accustomed to. It wasn't like he was disobedient or he didn't want to do good. It was a disconnect, and that's what Coach Golden helped him find. I think when Coach Golden came here, I was just wandering around and trying to find myself in football because I wasn't playing a lot. Twos, you're on defense. And he just sat me down and set me back on track. Over spring break, even though I had free time and time to spend with my family, I still find a way to work out. <laughs> That's something that Coach Golden is big on, empowerment. I just took the empowerment to work out and find ways to do things that want to help me through spring and through the whole season. Right now, we say you want to work like Eduardo works or be as unselfish as Eduardo is. So just think about that. In a year, somebody that you wouldn't consider to have the work ethic that you would want future generations of hurricanes to emulate, now he has really become the paragon. Coach Golden gave him a sense of guidance, you know, you know, showed him the way and OT just took it upon himself to, to get it done. No matter what happens with football, I achieved a lot coming from overtown and now I could go do something I really love and I really have a passion for it. And that's play football and go play under the lights.
going to Fort Myers for the scrimmage, you know, that excites us as players to see people coming out to watch us. We never had a scrimmage in Fort Myers, so it was a new environment. The reason you do scrimmages like that, it's a way to show gratitude towards your alums and, and fans in that area. Secondly, it gives the student athletes an opportunity to have a stage. Everything that we do as an organization uh, is gonna be measured on 12 to 14 games. We have to have a test. We have to have some way to measure where we are as individuals and then as a team. The Fort Myers scrimmage, just like the Hialeah scrimmage and certainly like the spring game, provides that forum, provides that arena, provides that opportunity to know that games are different than practices. And in this case, this scrimmage uh, was different. You know, I look forward to those scrimmages and those opportunities because I want to see, you know, which guys are going to finally get it under the lights. I need a guy to eliminate the shallow. Showtime right here. First down. First down. Showtime. Performing under the lights, it's a special feeling to be playing on a big stage where a whole bunch of people are watching you. We thrive off of it, you know, a big play, and everyone gets excited, big sack. An interception, you know, that's things that, you know, gets our defense excited. Come out of the huddle and set your pads, set a tone right now, let's go! Anytime we put on a Miami Hurricane uniform and we're part of that defense, we're gonna go out and we're gonna play hard, we're gonna play physical, we're gonna finish, and we're gonna demand all the little things. I think the guys are starting to understand that. that that's not going away, but I also think they're starting to uh, embrace it. Give it to him, give it to him, down a distance, let's go. You know, we were tackling well, we were disrupting the ball, we were getting interceptions, the DBs weren't getting beat deep. You know, everybody was doing their job, and that was the first time this spring for us to do that. Go run it! Going against our defense was hard at the last scrimmage. Them guys came out to play. It was 11 hats to the ball every play. You know, everybody was trying to get a hit on the ball carrier. We take pride in stopping the run. Two minutes. Here we go. 128 left. Two timeouts. They need a touchdown. The last part of the scrimmage was a two-minute drill, and Coach Donovan, Coach Franklin is always preaching it's technique time. When it's under two minutes, you got to use your technique and make plays. Technique time right now. Coach called a play with me to just you know, go and rush. I took advantage of that and got off the ball and used my technique and got a sack. He executed it flawlessly. It's something that we try to train daily so that the reaction in the heat of battle turns out the way it did. When coach asks you to do something and you do it and, it, and it's successful and you know makes you happy because you, know, you made a big play and it makes him happy because you listened to him and, and, and uh, you made that play for the defense. So it's a win-win for both. At the end of the day, what we're trying to do is achieve peak performance. I mean, essentially, that's why we exist. Say what you just said. Hey, hey, defense, y'all got out of this. Hey, yeah. now, offense, you got that look right now. All right, you got that look. Put it behind you and let's go. Let's move forward. You got me? Yes, sir. Everybody understand? Yes, sir. Really, that's what we want to see here coming out of this spring. Who produced, who performed, who executed, who separated themselves in that arena. Watch and learn.